offline of the show where the telephone callers uh, would like to uh, uh, ask you a couple of questions. Good evening, Tafa from Ghana. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Hello, good evening, Shaka. How are you doing? I am hugely terrific, Tafa. How are you today? I'm very good, Shaka. My, my greetings to your honorable guest in the studio. Thank you. Your question, Tafa. Shaka, I have two quick, 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 quick questions. Uh, Shaka, many, many Africans have a belief, including me, that there's no way the President of the United States will pay a visit to somebody that they knew that has some criminal issue on his head. First of all, in regard to the Kenya, we all knew that the President of the United States has said a Kenya visit recently, and he met the President of Kenya and the Vice President. So some of us have that belief that if the United States knew that uh, Kenya President has some questions to answer, to ask the team. There's no way the United States President is a Kenyan president of it. Secondly, Chaka, my question that goes to ask you to whatever they are, International Criminal Court. Who, where is those people who give them the initial information that warrant the investigation? I would want to know. Because it, is, it was somebody who reported the case to them before they started the investigation. So where are those people? They, they should go and look for those people. We want to know what happened. The initial information that they have, based on that, they initiate the investigation against the Kenyan president and the vice president. Shaka, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Let's go to Nigeria. Good evening, Patrick. You're most welcome. Straight Talk Africa. Good evening, Mr. Shaka. Good evening, our guest. That's Patrick Okura for in Arochipo, Nigeria. Terrific. Uh, Mr. Shaka, you see, let us face reality. ICC job in Kenya was a welcome development. And my question goes to Mr. Nyaka, sir. If ICC did not go to Kenya, do you agree with me that many African leaders could have turned election in their country to be true or die, true or false? Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go to Cliff from Uganda. Cliff, you're most welcome straight to Africa. Ishaka, how are you? I am hugely terrific, Sam, but you are called Cliff. How are you? Um, um, before, uh, before the ICC prosecutes only African cases, uh, what you want me to say that wait a minute, there are action cases and uh, acts against uh, humanity in Iraq, North America, Syria, Palestine, the situation with Israel, Colombia, and uh, why can't the ICC cover widely the scope of investigation greatly and not to target all the African states? Thank you, Shaka, and have a nice time. You're most welcome. Uh, uh, Nyaka, you want to respond to... Yeah, the, the question, the first one was about... Uh, the, the second Kenya. one from Nigeria. No, no, about Kenya. Uh, but I could not hear clearly, it, but I know that, yes, it was difficult. But what I think I have understood uh, is that about Kenya, if you know, the ICC does not go there, and it's, it's not a, it may be an opportunity for African leaders you know, to do fraud around the election and then, and then stay in power. But first of all, we have to agree that all of us, if the international tribunal or international jurisdiction can be fair, we agree. Uh, we know the UN, you know, we, we, you know, so I do not want to go into that, but we can look at the UN, the way it's functioning. So if there is something that is there, you know, that's fair, we will agree. But in the case of Kenya, there are two things that I forgot to say that I'm going to say now. First, if they want to go after Uru Kenyatta, or, or, or they should have gone also after Kibaki, or they should have gone after Raila Odinga. And that the very Raila Odinga that uh, Sylvia mentioned, did we know that the West favored him, and then everything that was put into place under the pressure of the West was to eliminate Uru Kenyatta, you know, to, so that, you know, to give a competitive advantage to Raila Odiga, unfairness in the case of Kenya, just in the beginning, first thing. Second, uh, we can see, for instance, that we can say, well, you know, we have to go after the U.S., or we have to go after, I don't talk about things, you know, that I cannot master in that case. It is almost impossible because the Security Council is in the hands of a few and would decide for global politics. So we're not going to dream 
of America being prosecuted by the International Criminal Court. But I think we should also frankly point out that uh, if that were to happen in the United States of America, the incumbent president would be impeached. In fact, there has been an impeachment when I am here against a sitting president at one time called Bill Clinton, except that he was never indicted. Let's go for it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shaka. That, that's an excellent observation, actually. Uh, the, the U.S. Uh, municipal law, which is domestic law, we call it municipal law, uh, has clearly shown that they've got very effective checks and balances within the, the legislature, uh, which makes it uh, possible to get a president uh, impeached. In Africa and many developing countries, it's a little bit different. But I think one important policy recommendation going forward, which would really help you have 30 seconds. The, IC, uh, the ICC, is to have a legal mechanism which can actually compel the Security Council to bring certain cases from the West to the ICC. We don't have that leverage. Mm. It simply says the Security Council can bring a case, but under what grounds? Correct. The statute can be amended to say somebody can bring a motion okay. to compel the Security Council to, make, to move ahead. Thank and you. what about others who say that uh, the Africans should set up their own court? But this would be a court that leaders in Africa would control. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult yeah. given the political culture in yes. Africa. Um, I doubt very much that that would succeed. I see. Well, okay. on that note, thanks to our distinguished guests. Dr. Kenneth Mwenda, a professor at American University Washington College of Law, and Dr. Nyaka Lagoke, founder of the Revival of Pan-Africanism Forum. Thanks to affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next, and tomorrow morning it's Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better, Africa. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive. <laughs> <laughs>